Swifter, in this video we're going to learn to deal with complex JSON, specifically nested JSON and JSON arrays. Giddy up! Alright Swifter, I hope there are blue skies wherever you are. So this is where we're headed in the next two videos. You can see that we have a table view here that holds a week's worth of weather for each location. And as I swipe left or right, you see that that weather changes. So we can see several days of forecast data for each location. Now you see a table view and a table view implies an array. So we'll need to create an array to hold what you see in this table view. Each element of the array will be a struct. So we'll create a custom struct and it'll hold this daily weather data that you see here. One struct for each day of the week at that location. And the struct will contain an icon name, the weekday, a daily weather summary, and a projected high and low temperature. Now, the table view has a custom class, and you can tell because this user interface is much more complex than we would get from any of the iOS built-in table view cells like basic or subtitle. And while weather data is going to contain an array of this new daily weather struct, we're going to define it outside of the weather data class. And this is so that we can actually use that data structure inside of our custom table view cell. Now we're going to work together on getting the daily weather here, but you want to pay attention to how we set this up because at some point in another couple of videos, there's going to be a challenge for you to get hourly data as well. And we're going to show this in a horizontally scrolling collection view. Now we haven't worked with arrays of JSON before, but it's not too difficult. Let's get to work. Now, if we look at dark sky JSON output on the web, we've so far worked with nested JSON, but none of this is an array. At our base level, we got time zone data. Then inside of this currently key, we got temperature and time. And then underneath daily, we got summary and icon. Well, now we're gonna be concerned with this data that you see inside of daily. And the open bracket that we see here tells us that this is an array. So you might not be able to tell by looking at this, but the dark sky API documentation says that this data field in here gives us the daily weather forecast for that location. Each element in the array is another day's forecast. And the day is actually given by the value of the time key in here, even though it's in Unix state, we've already learned how to convert that. So we're going to want to go inside of daily and then get the array data and then filter out the time icon summary, temperature high and temperature low. So this slide shows JSON on the left and our weather detail data structures on the right. And everything we get is inside of this response value. So we created a data structure called capital response. That's our response blueprint. And at the base level of response, we get time zone. So we can see down here that we put that into response.timezone. And it's important that all of the variables that we have in our structs here have the same exact name as the key values that we see in JSON. So that's why time zone, all lowercase for both the variable name as well as the key that we see in the JSON data. Now we also get two values inside of currently. So we created a currently data structure and that's where we have temperature and time again, spelled the same as it is in the JSON. And we have a daily data structure and that's where we get summary and icon. And you can see how we access nested JSON. So response represents everything that we get down. So that's why you don't see the word response over here. But to get, for example, the summary, we say response, which is everything. Then we go to dot daily. Then we go to dot summary. So down here to get our summary response dot daily dot summary. Now you also see that we never refer to this response value or any of our special data structures over here outside of this class file. We only use these values inside of weather data to parse or filter out our JSON. So one good programming practice is to put the word private in front of anything that you're only going to be using inside of that class or struct file. And this is especially good for us to do as we add more data structures and more complexity, which we're about to do. Because this way code completion, when it's used outside of weather data, like in our location detail view controller, won't show response or anything that's nested inside of it. It will only show those class properties like time zone, current time, temperature, daily icon that we've defined as class-wide properties and that don't have private in front of them. So we need to dive into this data key and grab out an array. And to do this, we'll create a new data structure that we'll only use internally. So we'll call this daily data. We'll have private in front of its definition, and it'll contain the data that we need to get from JSON. So the variables are spelled the same way as the JSON keys. They're declared with types that are compatible with the JSON values for those keys. So this new daily data struct contains icon, a string, time, a time interval, summary, a string, temperature high, a double, and temperature low, a double. Then up here in daily, since data is inside of daily, we'll declare a new value named data that has an array of daily data. So that's why we see daily data, upper camel case in brackets. And then once we have this daily data data structure set up, this is what we're going to do. Inside of our do try catch loop, inside of our get data function in weather detail, 
response will have daily and data since those are both codable. Swift automatically does all of the JSON conversion for us into those data structures, which is awesome. But then we're going to go into this array, and that's at response.daily.data. The zero goes from the very first element up to, but not including count. So we've got dot dot less than. It's a half open range. We'll loop through all of the elements, and then inside the loop, Look at how we're going to get the data. We'll say response.daily.data, just like we did before, using dot notation to go down another level. But then inside data, we need to add brackets because this is an array. So that's why we say data bracket index. Remember, index is just our integer value as we go through all of the elements in the array. And then after the bracket, we use dot notation to get inside any elements of the daily data data structure. Sort of like what we did when we had arrays of structs or arrays of objects. Now, one last thing before we dive in. Each of the values we previously gotten from response, we've put in a class property at the top level of weather detail. So we just use dot notation one level in to get these guys that you see here. Time zone, current time, temperature, summary, daily icon. And we use these outside of the weather detail class too. So remember, we refer to them when we're setting up our user interface and location detail view controller. So these guys should not be private. Now we've added private in front of these guys, so we won't see these values in code completion when we're outside of the weather detail file. But to hold this array of daily data, we're going to create another data structure. And we'll use this not only inside of weather detail, but we'll also use it inside of a custom table view cell that we'll create in the next video. So we'll define this new structure outside of this class file. And some of the values are a little bit different than the daily data that you see here. We're going to convert time, the time interval, to a string that holds the daily weekday. We are going to convert the double temperatures to integers. And we'll eventually move this daily weather data into its own separate file, but we'll keep it in weatherdetail.swift above the class definition for now, just because it'll make it easier for us to refer to this struct as we're coding things up. And then we'll create a property inside of weather detail that's an array of this daily weather data struct. And we'll call that lower camel case daily weather data. And that should give us what we need. And so now also notice what we do when we loop through this data array that we get back in our response. We use dot notation to dig into the response values so that we get each of the individual key and the values for those keys that we want that's inside of a given element in this data array. Then we assign it to a local constant. Then we use these local constants to create a new instance of daily weather data. And then we append this new daily weather data as a new element inside of our daily weather data array. So this one here is an array and we'll eventually be able to access this array and use it in our table view. And it's really recommended that you go back and take a look at this code after you entered in and you've got it working to make sure that you understand everything. As mentioned in a future video, you're going to be challenged to do something very similar to this to get hourly weather data instead of just the daily weather that we're getting here. And so as a developer, this is definitely the kind of work that you'll be expected to repeat but in a different context, using different JSON. And remember, programming is just like learning a foreign language. You don't look at vocabulary once and never again. You constantly review until you really have it down. So hopefully the video approach will really help you gain mastery of these concepts. As we go through this initial complexity, you can go back and after you've seen things run, hopefully you'll get it that time. So now that we've got our blueprint for what we need to do, let's code. So we'll do our work inside of this video inside of the weatherdetail.swift file. So let's first set these structs to private. We'll put private in front of the struct definition, and this will make it so that these are only available inside of this file. We never refer to response outside of this file, so it really makes sense. And we're not polluting what we would see in code completion if we start to refer to anything that's of type weather data outside of this file. And below these three structs, we'll create our new struct. So we'll say private struct capital daily data, upper camel case, colon codable, open and close curlies. And then we'll declare our properties, var icon colon string, var time colon time interval, var summary colon string, var temperature high colon double, and var temperature low colon double. All of these are named the same way they're named inside of the keys in our JSON, and the types are compatible with the values in the JSON. Now inside of our daily struct, we'll create an array of daily data. We'll call that data. So we'll say var data colon, and then in brackets, daily data, the struct we just created. And again, this is called data. 
lowercase letters because that's the same name as the key inside of our JSON. Then scroll down inside of the get data method inside of our do loop after our try, we've got our JSON response. Just after we set daily icon here, we'll start our loop and we'll use this to get all of the values that we're interested in that are inside of this data array. So we'll say for index in zero dot dot less than response dot daily dot data dot count open and close curlies and we'll get the string for the icon with let daily icon equals response dot daily dot data open bracket index close bracket dot icon then daily summary let daily summary equals response dot daily dot data open bracket index close bracket dot summary then to hold the high temperature let daily high equals response dot daily dot data bracket index bracket dot temperature high then I'll copy the daily high line, paste it down below, change daily high to daily low, and temperature high to temperature low. Then I'll scroll up to the top just above where I start to define the weather detail class. And I'm going to create that struct, which is going to be used not only inside of this class to create an array of daily weather data, we'll also use this inside of our custom table view cell that we'll create in the next video. So we'll call the struct daily weather data. We'll say struct upper camel case, daily weather data, colon codable, open and close curlies. Actually, this struct probably doesn't need to be codable because I don't think that we're actually getting anything from JSON directly into this struct, but I'll leave codable in for now. And then let's define the five properties of this struct. So var daily icon, colon string, var daily weekday, colon string, var daily summary colon string var daily high colon int and var daily low colon int and we could use any name we want for these because we're not using these to decode json and then i'll scroll down into weather detail and declare an array of the struct that i just defined by saying var lower camel case daily weather data colon and then in brackets daily weather data and then equals open and close brackets so this starts out as an empty array. Then we'll scroll back down to our do loop after we've decoded our JSON and created these constants. And now we want to use these constants that we've created above to create a new instance of the daily weather data struct, which we'll add as an element to our daily weather array. So we'll say let daily weather data equal capital daily weather data open parens. We get the constructor in here that wants all of these parameters, press return. And for daily icon, we'll pass in daily icon. For daily weekday, we're gonna to have to do some calendar work here. So I'll just put in an empty string for now. Daily summary is daily summary. Uh, and for daily high and daily low, I wanna convert these to ints. So I'll just put capital int, then open parens. And right after temperature high, I'm gonna say dot rounded, open and close parens to round the value, either up or down, and then close parens. And I'll do the same exact thing with daily low below it. So then when I create my daily weather data, I can pass in daily high now and daily low. These are both ints. And now that I've created an instance of daily weather data below this, I'm going to say self dot daily weather data, which is the array of daily weather data dot append and then in parentheses daily weather data. That's what I just created above it. And it's probably not good practice for me to use daily weather data as both a singular and plural one after the other here. So I'm going to change this lower camel case daily weather data to just daily weather and then append that into daily weather data. Oops, and I've got one error up here in daily low. I should have made that capital int. I did it lowercase int. Sorry about that. And now let's do the work to get the day of the week. So just after the for loop, I'm going to create a new value, let weekday date. And this will just convert from the Unix date that I get back from dark sky. So I'll say equals date open parens. Make sure that you select time interval since 1970. And then as the value I'm going to pass in, I'll just copy response through dot icon below, paste it into the time interval then backspace over dot icon and put dot time in. And again, this is going to take the Unix date that we get from dark sky, and it's going to turn it into a valid Apple iOS Swift date. And then we can format this so that we just get the day of the week. Now down below, let's get our weekday. So we'll say let daily weekday equals, and I want to put a date formatter in here, but I don't have a date formatter that I can use inside of this class file. But instead of creating one from scratch, I'm just going to hop back over to my location detail view controller, copy the date formatter that I created there, then head back to the top of weather detail, paste it in just under my import statement. Again, this is going to be outside of the class file and the struct that will create it only once, but allow me to reuse it inside of this Swift file. And then I'll modify it so that it'll format the date and just give me the weekday. And I have the print statement up here just to prove that the date formatter is created only once when I scan the console. But to distinguish it from the one that's on location detail view controller, 
what I'll do is I'll add two more little calendar icons here. And after the text, I just created a date formatter. I'll put in and copy and paste weather detail dot swift down here. Then I remember our previous format to get just the day of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, is this quadruple capital E in here. So I'll delete everything in the date format except for the four capital E's. And this is all I need to do to set up my formatter. And I'll deal with the time zones below. I won't put them inside of the date formatter initializer. Then back down here in the do try catch where I'm looping through all of the values in the data array. After I get the valid Apple date, which is weekly date, I'll set the date formatters time zone. So I'll say date formatter dot time zone equals capital time zone, open parens, select the option with identifier. Then I'm going to copy response dot time zone from up here, paste it in as the identifier string I'm passing in. And then in the line right below this, I'll set let daily weekday equal to date formatter, which I've now created dot string. And for the from value in here, I'll just copy this weekday date and paste that in. That's that valid Apple date that I created from the Unix date that I got from Dark Sky. Now we'll worry about the table view in the next video, but right here, let's just make sure that we're getting this array data properly. So on this last line here, I'm going to type in a print statement and in between the double quotes, I'll say day colon string interp, high colon string interp, low colon string interp. Ah, oh, and I almost forgot now that I've got my daily weekday all configured. So I'm getting the day of the week. I'm going to highlight this daily weekday constant, which is the day of the week. I'll copy this and I'll paste it over the empty string that's inside of this daily weather data initializer. And then down in my print statement for my string interp after day, I'll say daily weather dot daily weekday. The high is daily weather dot daily high and the low is daily weather dot daily low. Now we're ready to build and run. So let's see what we've got. Nothing in the app itself will change, but if we keep an eye on the console, we should see that we're getting the array data and printing out three values for each element in the array, weekday, high temp and low temp. And here's our moment of truth. And hey, there it is. We can see that we've got daily weather data printing out for location at coordinate zero, zero. We can scroll up. We can see that we created that date formatter inside of our weather detail file just once. We've got the dates from Wednesday to Wednesday. It looks like it's really hot at coordinate zero, zero. Then if we swipe on over to Gonzaga, we see the Gonzaga temps. We can scroll to find the Gonzaga temps in the 50s starting on Wednesday, almost 60 a week from today. Let's swipe again. Georgia Tech, San Francisco State. Let's look at Boston College. What's the future look like weather-wise for me? And it looks like today will have a high of 54, 44 tomorrow, almost 70 on Friday. Woohoo! And looking good. So folks, in this video, you learned how to grab an array of data from JSON, how to put that inside of your data structure. In the next video, we'll tackle the table view.